Hi there. Um, today I'm going to look at satin stitch scrolls to sh give you some tips on how to get them to look nicer. Um, depending on the shape they can be a little bit tricky and this can apply to other shapes too that you want to fill with satin stitch. Satin stitch can be overused but um, we'll have a look at it in this instance. So I've got a cut work pattern here that I want to work on and if I zoom in I've got whoops sorry zoom in you think I know how to do that by now so put your mouse where you want to scroll to and scroll gently so we've got this scroll shape here with this circle at the end now you would think okay I can just create an area and fill it with satin stitch so let's just go ahead and do that with the closed object so I'm going to start here at this point now the first problem is we've got this line here that goes right in so I'm not going to go into that line I'm going to start here and I'm just going through the middle of this line and as you can see this is a JPEG so it's just a scanned in um, hand stitch cut work pattern and I'm just right clicking on the curves and left clicking on the straight lines now I probably should have made this go a little bit longer into this area but we'll talk about that in other videos so that we don't get any gaps okay now I'm back to nearly where I started so I can just press my enter to fill that shape and I didn't choose my satin stitch before I started so I'll choose it now and will show true view um, I need to select it first before I change it to satin stitch so over to satin stitch there we go now the default for all the fill stitches is a 45 degree angle which depending on the shape can give you some very long stitches so here you can see the stitches are going right across here that's not desirable for satin stitch so we really need some angles in there um, so we can go to edit and you've got add or remove stitch angles now if remove stitch angles is grayed out it means there are no additional stitch angles other than the 45 and you can go ahead and add your stitch angles regardless if the remove stitch angles is highlighted that is it's available you should probably remove your stitch angles first because there are already some in there and they will um, react with the ones you add so we don't need to do that we can just add stitch angles and you'll get a gray line with the nodes around your area and you can just click on either side to add an angle so that's one angle and I'm just going around I like to go right straight across so that's making the shortest um, satin stitch possible for this area and it also gives a nice look now here we come to the tricky part let's zoom in if I leave this as it is this angle will um, affect the rest of it here so I need to go across there and across there and probably across there to get this fanning around and I'll hit my enter button when I'm happy now let's have a look so we've got a nice spread out satin stitch round here now what's going on here because of the um, change in angle these this side is um, the no the angle points are closer together and over here they're spread out so here's one here's one and here's one so it's working like a fan and what that means is that when you get into this tight area if the software didn't do something to the stitches they'd all be stitching on top of each other and you'd end up with a thread break or a mess so or your machine would jam so what the software has done is it has shorten some of the stitches so that there's room for the others to keep an even amount now how this looks when it stitches out can be um, it can still look quite nice because they can blend in because you can see here they're unevenly um, 
shortened and I can show you that even more clearly by going out of true view and showing the needle points um, but if I zoom out you can see the needle points a bit more clearly so you can see here that's not too bad you can see here that they're quite jagged here blending in now I'm not really happy with this little spot here I don't know that that's going to look as nice when it's stitched so I'm going to bring back my true view and I'm going to go to the re select the object and go to the reshape tool and that will allow me to move those angles so I'm just going to try and spread these around a little bit more to get a slightly nicer look now I've got some I'm zoomed right in you can see gaps here but in actual fact I'm 900 percent 900 plus percent zoomed in so in actual fact um, if that was zoomed back out to 100 percent you wouldn't see any gaps but I think I'm happier with the transition around there so you can play around with that that um, till you're happy with the look so don't be afraid to add your stitch angles and create the shape you want even that looks a bit better and of course test sew so don't do your whole design and then test sew because you've got to test sew for miles before you um, find that the first object you created didn't look right test sew this in a little tiny hope with a scrap of fabric and then once you know and get a feel for what you need to do to get a good look you can apply that in all your other designs you don't and then you wouldn't have to test sew every single thing um, so it's really a learning curve of what's going to stitch out nicely for more quick tips on how to digitise with the Benina embroidery software, then click on the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell notifications.